Welcome to Broadway Corner with Ashley Ha, where you can hear your favorite performers talk about how they got started, their careers, and everything in between. Make sure to follow me on Instagram and Spotify at Broadway Corner with Ashley Ha, and on my main Broadway account at Broadway underscore Corner on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoy. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Broadway Corner with Ashley Ha. I am so happy you are here. And today is a very special day. I am speaking with someone that I admire, I've admired for so long. Um, and she has the most unbelievable voice, has been in two of my favorite shows on Broadway, and has the kindest heart. It is Julia Abueva. Hi, Hi. Julia. Hi. Thank, you. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm so happy we finally get started to do this <laughs> yeah it's been a little bit but we've both been busy you've been busy originating mm -hmm. into new broadway shows so i'm like you've had quite, <laughs> quite the past couple years um <laughs> journey um <laughs> i'm getting yeah, it's been busy yeah but I'm, I'm, I'm so happy we get to do this yeah i get to kind of re remember all these new memories mm -hmm. um so i'll read a little bit about you so mm -hmm. Julia made her Broadway debut two years ago in K-pop, originating the role of Sonoma, my favorite person, um, and just finished her second Broadway show, Here Lies Love, originating Dovey Beams and appearing in the ensemble. She appeared off-Broadway in Superhero and in the West End in Miss Saigon, where she was an understudy for Kim, but she's also performed a lot in Asia. In Singapore, she was in Next to Normal and Spring Awakening, and in Manila, she appeared in Into the Woods, Aspects of Love, Fantastic and Cinderella. You can see her on TV and Everything's Trash on Freeform, Making Friends on Amazon, and in the feature film Stella's Last Weekend. So, oh my gosh, so much even in your bio of just your entire kind of career. Um, but yeah, so excited to get to talk to you today all about your journey. Um, so yeah. You got it. That's, that's really great. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, but let's start at the very beginning. So mm -hmm. talk about your background, where you grew up, like where you mm -hmm. went to school and how you discovered singing and performing. Yeah, so I was, uh, I'm born in the Philippines originally. Both my parents are from there. And um, I was in the Philippines until I was four years old. And we, and then after that, we moved to Singapore because of my mom's job. So I, I grew up in Singapore and that's where I went to school. I went to um, the Singapore American School and um, I started, and it was great. It was very scary <laughs> at first. Um, I had a little bit of anxiety going in there, very shy kid. Um, and I don't think anyone in, ever anticipated that I would end up the performer because I was just very, very shy. I just needed my mom all the time. And um, I, but when it came to singing, it was just, I would light up and I, I loved it. So I started performing when I was seven. Um, it was through a woman from church. She heard me sing. And so she asked me to guest in her concert at this, at this theater in Singapore called Esplanade. Um, and it was an outdoor concert. It was uh, the Esplanade by the Bay. And I sang Tomorrow from Annie and Where's Love from Oliver. And uh, I just remember being so nervous. I was shaking, my right leg was shaking the whole time. And I was holding the microphone. I was just staring at my mom, but I just kept going. And, and then I finished and, you know, the audience was clapping so loud. And it was, I, I mean, I'd never felt anything like it. And after that, I knew I wanted to keep performing. And I was very lucky though, just from that one performance, there was a talent manager in the audience. And she basically scouted me and, um, at that time, the entertainment industry in Singapore wasn't very big yet, but this this lady uh, had this idea. She wanted to form the very first children's performing group, uh, or she yeah, she wanted to start that and uh, call it the Jazz Kids. So basically, it was going to be a bunch of kids singing jazz music, and so um, she wanted me to be a part of it. It was eight kids, and that's kind of where I got my start. And we would just perform everywhere, music festivals, and then I started getting invited. Um, as a soloist to perform for like corporate events for, um, you know, the prime, the prime minister of Singapore and the president. And, you know, it was, and I guess that's kind of where, yeah, it started going up and up and up. And I was, I was very blessed and I, I kept having opportunities to perform and get paid for it. Like I, it was just a hobby. I would have done it for free, but 
you know, they did, they did pay me and, and my mom saved all my money for me, of course, and very grateful to her for that. So, um, yeah, that's basically how I, I got started. And then, um, I guess did in a concert in the Philippines, uh, with Monique Wilson, who was the original, uh, alternate Kim in Miss Saigon. And that's where Leia saw me. And, um, so I, uh, right after the show, I got to meet Leia and her mom asked me, do you want to sing with Leia? And uh, I was like, yeah, sure. And so I played little Leia in her concerts and we did two or three concerts where I was young Leia. So I got to sing with her. And um, and then I started doing like musical theater every summer uh, or whenever there was a chance to do theater. That was like my love, my passion. Um, and then my dad would post YouTube videos of me, I guess. And uh, that's when like Oprah Winfrey's people uh, found me. And I, that's where I got featured for like world's smartest, most talented kids. I was singing in church, I was singing the prayer. And so then from there, it was like this huge thing. I got featured in the newspaper in Singapore and I just started getting like nonstop opportunities to the point where I wasn't, you know, I, I loved it, but I told my mom, like, I, I kind of want to be like a normal kid. I was, you know, missing field trips and, you know, not having much of a social like life in school because after school, I would book it to go to a performance. And that was great and fun, but I kind of wanted to slow down for a bit, um, which I did. And then Saigon happened right after high school. So I went to London and after that came here. So. Yeah, I mean, you started, started so <laughs> that's the short version, the condensed version. Wow. So much to think about. And like, I didn't realize until I started like looking you up more on YouTube and stuff about that, that you were like, people called you a child prodigy of a singer because you had this big voice and you were able to just like move people with your performance. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that you were performing with Lea Salonga when you were so little, like that is just I mean, who gets to do that at that age? I know, I know. You had that tremendous gift that, you know, you were able to just share with people. And the fact that you were shy at first and are you, do you still get stage fright? Because I know I do so much. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. You know, I I find that it's, it's a good thing, a little bit of nerves. It means that it still matters to you and yeah you know, it, it it's important. So that's a really good thing. I once had a director in Singapore who had switched to directing. She used to be an actress and I, I asked her why. And she said, well, I was getting ready for my opening night and I wasn't nervous at all. And that's when I realized like I needed to do something that excited me and made me nervous again, because she was like, at that point I was like, you know, I'd done so many plays and I, you know, it wasn't exciting. So I think it's a good thing that we still get nervous, even up to this day, absolutely, yes. To answer your question, yes, I get nervous all the time, <laughs> all the time. I feel like I will be <laughs> that way for a while. Of just, it's <laughs> a lot of weight on yourself and it's a good thing in a way, a good and a bad thing kind of. of it's just a good thing, it's a good thing. I, you know, sometimes, especially like for auditions, um, I, need to find ways to really calm myself down because it really can affect your performance, especially in that space. It's very like exposed, you know? Um, so I, I, I need to find ways to like meditate, breathe, pray, you know, like really just calm my nerves because when it starts to affect your performance, that's when it gets a little tricky, but a little bit of nerves always helps. It keeps yeah. you kind of, you know, present. Mm -hmm. so. No. You, you know, doing what you love. Um, and so did you ever think of doing anything other than performing? <laughs> yeah, when I actually, the first thing I wanted to be when, when I was little, I wanted to be a veterinarian because I love animals. So that was the first thing that I wanted to be. I never thought that, I mean, after I started performing, I was like, yeah, no, this is what I want to do. But up until then, I was, I never really saw this for myself. I I loved I loved singing, I loved performing, but I, I thought it was just gonna be that, like a hobby. Um, but but then it it I mean I was like I said, I was very blessed. The opportunities didn't really stop. So I, I kept going and I was able to hone my craft. Um, so I'm very like fortunate in that aspect. And after a while I realized like, yeah, this is 
this could be real. Like I could do this for a living, you know, I could, could try. <laughs> so it, um, yeah, but there, there were definitely other things and I did love school. Like I love math. That's like my favorite subject. Um, I feel like if I had applied, I always tell myself, like if I applied myself like a little bit more in school, like I think I could have, <laughs> I think I could have been really smart maybe, I don't know, gotten into the medical field or something. No, but I, I, <laughs> I, um, I love, I love this so much. And I think those who are, who have a passion for this, like, we're very lucky. And, and especially when we get to do what we love, it's like, it's such a blessing because it doesn't feel like work, you know, like that's, I don't know many people who get to say that like about their job, like, yeah. You know, it's kind of just becomes a routine thing. And my mom always tells me, she's like, I'm not in love with my work. She's like, it's amazing that you love what you do. And so it, it doesn't really feel like work. Yeah, no, I think that's amazing. That you, mm -hmm. you make your life revolve kind of around what you do love to do, because I think so many people in the world don't necessarily get to do that. And the fact that you and I both get are doing that. Um, <laughs> This yeah. putting everything into something that we mm -hmm. love so much is following your passion and that's really all absolutely. you can absolutely absolutely i i believe that whatever your passions are there's like something in that like that's what you're meant to do there's like a calling in that direction so you should listen to that your gut instinct and follow it yeah mm -hmm. definitely and i mean mm -hmm. since you are from you know the well you were born in the philippines and moved to singapore mm -hmm. In London and then you were in New York and going all these different places living all these yeah. places. um but being you know originally from Asia like did you feel how did it feel that both of your Broadway shows were pretty much entirely like API and Asian um oh. cast, except for except for the amazing hobby and k-pop um everyone else <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes and so like what did it feel like for you to just be able to be I mean, you were Filipino in both of them too. Mm -hmm. Your parents mm -hmm. are both like specifically Filipino. Right. I know. I. I mean, I feel so proud. I. I feel so lucky that I'm able to represent, and I. I don't think there are enough opportunities. So the fact that I got to do two, you know, Broadway shows back to back that are Asian stories, it's just it's truly an honor. Like it. I mean, it's. I don't know even right now I'm like yeah that's it's a big deal it's like definitely something that I could have never imagined if I had told my younger self this I wouldn't have believed it so I'm I, I feel very fortunate and yeah very very proud to to be able to represent yeah yeah and and you were the only cast member to be in both of them um <laughs> I mean, it's they're my two favorite shows, pretty much ever. Oh, you're so sweet. You're just saying that. No, I'm kidding. Oh, I'm so sweet. I would have not <laughs> so much support and so much love to these shows. If I, I, you're, like, that means so much, Ashley. <laughs> Thank you so much. That oh. means everything. Your support, like I said, is everything. Thank you so much. And yeah, like, what was it like for K-pop? Because you started that journey in way before this what year did it yeah, what? 2017 yeah. <laughs> yeah well it was it was a long time coming and k-pop is like has a very special place in my heart it's my baby it's the first new york production that i did it was the first job that i got mm -hmm. um after i moved here from london so i uh i didn't know what i was getting into to be honest when i first got the the audition for the breakdown I was like I called my agents I was like I don't think I'm right for this like I've I don't know like I've, I've seen k-pop girls like I don't think I'm that like I don't I, I don't you know I I don't think I'm quite the mold he was like I think you should go in just just go in I think you are right for it mm -hmm. and then and then they liked me and I and I, I I got it and loved it I mean I, it was kind of perfect for me because I don't know if I told you but I, um, back in Asia, I was actually signed to a record label. I was signed with Sony Records in Asia yeah. at uh, from the age of 13. So uh, I was, I actually had recorded an entire album. I was like working on a second one. 
but my heart wasn't in at that time my heart was a musical theater like it was theater that I wanted to pursue not so much like the commercial route like I wasn't I mean I feel very differently now but at that time it was theater that's that's what I wanted to do so you know they would talk to my mom secretly and be like we just don't think she's passionate about this like what do we do um my mom's like I'm you know it's it's really up to her like I can't make the shot so I I can't call the shot so it just you know we'll see right like we'll keep trying but my heart wasn't in going that direction and so I I but I did enjoy it there was like there's a part of me that loved pop loved singing loved being in a studio like Mm -hmm. I love just singing I don't like I don't care to be seen like I just want to sing you know (laughs) and I got to do that being in a recording studio so um there's a part of me that really loves that as well but I love the live aspect of theater so um the two blended like I got to do like the pop you know and be in a theater I was like wow this is this is kind of perfect for me so I got to use it really was kind of the perfect show and and role to like utilize all of my experience um which was awesome and was there something from the off-Broadway version? Because it was very different than what we ended up seeing. Right, on- right, right. And yeah. you got to even sing Pongarise. Like, what was something that you wish that you could have brought into the Broadway world? <laughs> if you... Oh, if- uh, yeah. I... Oh, my gosh. There are so many things about the, the off-Broadway that I, I loved. Um, like, I mean, like you said, it was a very different show. And so we really had to shift into a a linear story for one for the Broadway audience because they couldn't go in and out of three different rooms um but yeah the this the Sonoma Mui like little rivalry thing that was I'm not gonna lie like my heart broke a little bit when that when that got cut but um I spoke to Teddy about it and he was my director Teddy Berglund and he was so comforting and reassuring and you know said that this is you know they believe just trust that like everything, all the decisions that are being made, it's it's for everyone wants the show to be a success. And that's what they felt needed to happen, you know, in this version. So that's okay. But like but that, you know, that moment did have a special place in my heart. Um <laughs> but I also love what, you know, we ended up creating with the mm-hmm. girls. Yeah, doing our a cappella super goddess at the end of that scene. Mm-hmm. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. No, oh, I love listening to the music and even I, someone like ended up sending me the original like from the off-Broadway version mm-hmm. like that and I was like oh my gosh this is what we didn't get for Broadway. Yeah. <laughs> what, what did you what did you um hear like what just the little snippet of you singing Pongorese. I think they have oh, the audio yeah. of it and I was like oh that's yeah. true. <laughs> I, do, I do miss that part. I you do. got to work with like Ashley Park as Mui. I, I mean, Marina also as Mui for a little bit too. Um, and then like I saw Leia came to go see the show too and continue to support she- you. And like, mm-hmm. like could have been Leia, huge K pop fan. <laughs> Especially, yeah. B- I mean, of BTS, but yeah, she <laughs> was very supportive, which was so sweet. She wore our K pop hoodie like every day uh, during Here Lies Love. <laughs> during the rehearsals just like repping k-pop oh i know that was such i remember seeing her interviews and stuff for when it came to broadway and just seeing her support and all the other asian um actors mm-hmm. who were coming before us like, yes this is what we need right now um mm-hmm. for the show and just to yeah just keep giving it love and so what did it feel like for you to revisit a character you did five years earlier and bring her back to life <laughs> I feel like she never left me, you know, because I I knew we were supposed to do an out of town for K-pop and that got canceled because of COVID. And I mean, there was a point when I was like, I don't know if this is, I don't know what's going to happen because of COVID. It just keeps, we keep having plans and then they keep getting canceled. And, but I feel like the Sonoma character, like, she, I mean, she's just there. I feel like as soon as I start dancing and singing, she just... She's there. She's like my alter ego. She's like my Sasha Fierce, you know. <laughs> She's just there. So I she never, never really went away. I had to find. I think. I, I mean, the older I got to, because Sonoma is, um, she's she's a certain way. I had to, 
had to find a way to make her, um, I think, how do I phrase this? When I started, I was like the youngest in the, in the group. Um, and then as the way that Sonoma was written in this version was that she's the only, so the dynamic, I had to find a way to be like, you know, like a good leader and to support in that way. And um, yeah, like I said, it like the character was very differently written, especially because they took out that part where she was gonna like rival me and then like replace her eventually and all those things. So yeah, but <laughs> it was the same essence is, you know. <laughs> she's there, she, you just have she's to- there, she yeah. just wants to do her thing and perform and, you know, <laughs> serve. <laughs> yeah. and do you have a favorite costume that you wore in the show? Cause I mean, even from bro off Broadway to Broadway, like what was your favorite? Cause there were so many different ones even for off Broadway that I saw. Right. Or special, yeah. special K. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. I I think Clint did such an amazing job. Clint and Sophia Choi, they did such an amazing job with the costumes. I honestly, so you see these costumes in the playbill. These were not in the show. I really love them though. <laughs> I'm so happy. This is the picture chosen. I love that costume, but I also, I mean, I love all our costumes. They were so cute. Uh, my favorite though would have to be um, collectively like super goddess in the end when we're all in our colors I was lime green yeah um, yeah I think I was lime green Amy was baby blue Boyong was like red mm -hmm. red and pink. Kate was pink and Minyoung was like uh emerald green it was awesome I loved I love those looks like they were so fierce yeah um yeah yeah did you uh, did you have any favorite outfits? That... I, I really like your one for Shiganang V, like the skirt. Oh, really? oh my gosh, that one gave me like a heart attack the first time. I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> like really? And they're like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. No, my like, I mean, the skirt and like the look and like the with like my whole like midriff. I'm like, I'm gonna have to stand in <laughs> something. I don't know. Yeah, no, that was. But, I, I, yeah, pretty fierce. Um, <laughs> those were cute. Yeah, those were super cute. Um, what else? Oh yeah, our perfect costumes were cute too. But I think my the super goddess gin and tonic look was definitely my fave. Oh, and our blast off, like our finale mm -hmm. outfit. Those so are cute. Fun. No, because yeah. I, I don't think I told you, but Shiganong V was like the first song I ever saw of K-pop. I think so good right <laughs> like that one slaps someone posted like the b-roll of it and i was like oh my yeah. god i really like oh, it yeah. i didn't know yeah. what the story was i didn't know anything about it but i was like this is cool like this is amazing yeah. it's so catchy yeah. it's so <laughs> freaking good i remember the first time i heard that that was like one of our workshops leading up to broadway i think that was around like the same time amy joined mm -hmm. and i was like wow oh my god well done helen like it was, it was oh yeah, yeah. that was like one of that was definitely one of my favorites as well yeah no i remember i watched it for the first time and i was like oh my gosh like live when i got live i was like this is gonna change everything um yeah. <laughs> what did it mean for you to have your character be filipino in the show because there is that line like you don't say it too often you just say it in that one line yeah uh, meron din tagalog or like what did in tagalog like i say like we could also say it in tagalog yeah that that's like the only hint that they give that my character is filipino i i mean i'm so grateful that jason kim wrote my character is filipino because you know there is a part of me that's like ah uh, i i mean i feel like like imposter syndrome like I don't want to like pretend that I'm something I'm like that's it didn't feel right so I like felt very relieved um I because I wanted to be respectful of course because like I'm like a guest right in this and I, I wanted to learn everything properly the culture and like you know and I but you know I'm not Korean so I didn't want to pretend that I was um so I'm, I'm very grateful that Jason Kim you know allowed me to be like my uh authentic like Filipina itself and it's also authentic you know I, I mean I I talked to my castmates about this and Kevin Wu was so sweet and reassuring and he's like but this is like a normal thing in K-pop they always have other nationalities like not everyone is Korean so you know it's all good so 
I'm, I call myself Abraham says like I'm honorary Korean. That's what he calls me. <laughs> It's actually really funny because like whenever I'm in Bakersfield, um, we I actually grew up with a ton of Filipino people, and like yeah. that was my community. <laughs> like our, our a lot of our friends and close friends were all Filipino, mm -hmm. and they would call us honorary Filipino. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So it's like it's like that, but like for you exactly. and <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, but I remember like. At first, I was like, okay, I really like this show K-pop, but I was like, okay, I'm not Korean, I'm Asian, and, but I still see myself in the show. And then I found out that, like, you aren't Korean, you're Filipino, and, like, mm -hmm. half Taiwanese, I'm Taiwanese. Okay. Yeah. Oh, awesome. And he's Chinese and Filipino, and, you know, all these people being different ethnicities. I was like, wait, I do have a place in this show. Yes, we like, do. I would come in the, some time in the future, like, you know, I don't, I'm not just a guest. It's like, yeah, you're kind of invited into the party where there are Taiwanese idols and Chinese idols are like all over. I mean, Min's, um, Min's group, Miss A, half of them were Chinese. And it's like, that is, there is a space for that. And I think- yeah, absolutely. Lisa, she's Thai in Black Pink. Yeah. <laughs> I love Lisa. And like just knowing it is very inclusive and it's- mm -hmm of just just korean only korean you know nothing else it's like no there is space for all of us and you have to come in and honor it obviously uh, of course but it's like there is like the ability to see yourself in it and it's not just yeah. for korean people um it's oh. Kind of worldwide. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh i'm so happy that you know my character was able to to do that for you that makes me so happy <laughs> I, I keep saying this all the time like Sonoma is my dream role in K-pop like <laughs> it is the best and I just love so sweet. And the development of her character throughout is so interesting too of just you know she does have such a story to tell um and it rings true for a lot of performers I think that mm. get stage fright and are so scared and and just need to hear that someone else says that even when they might look perfect on stage you never know what's going on internally mm -hmm. um, yeah. so when you it's like so say, say your monologue and you know before super goddess and all that I'm just like mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of me I'm maybe not throwing up before school but I'm like I do feel that fear of just like you know putting yourself out there and wanting to oh, yeah okay <laughs> not it can be so scary it can be so scary because people have different opinions and they're you, you just never know like you, you not everyone's gonna love you but that's why you can't do it for validation for anyone else like you have to do it for you and I still have to remind myself of that because it's very easy to get caught up in that and kind of seek for validation from everything else other than your <laughs> what you're feeling what your intuition is telling you um, but at the end of the day, you just got to listen to your gut and trust yourself. And also, you know, you, you have to love it because if you don't love it anymore, then what's the point? Yeah. Um, but you know, what's so funny about that monologue. The first time I read it after I finished reading it, I looked over at Jason Kim and I was like, how did you know? Because <laughs> it's so, it's truly very similar to my story. Like, and he was just like, he just smiled at me and like, you know, it's like cheeky little smile. I'm like, wow, that's so impressive. I never, I don't think I ever told Jason Kim that I was this like shy, scared little kid who would like hide behind her mom and her sister and would cry every day, you know, before school because I didn't want to like surround myself with all these, like, I mean, it was my first time being in an international school, being around like white kids, <laughs> you know, because I was in the Philippines before that. I was terrified. And also just, I don't know. I was a very nervous kid. I was very shy. Mm -hmm. And uh, the throwing up thing, it was so real. I used to throw up because I would like, I don't know if I was like got motion sickness from the bus or if it was nerves, probably both, but that was me. Yeah. Like, I was, I was just this scared little thing, but I loved singing and, and, and um, I loved um, making people happy and being on stage and sharing my gift. So I, that was like the only thing that kind of uh, fixed that, I guess, like that that fear. So I was so impressed when Jason wrote that monologue. I was like, how did you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I still want to know how he knew. 
<laughs> or if it was just, we just I just lucked out <laughs> it's just perfect for me. yeah no I mean I thought I thought it was so fascinating and incredible that so much of k-pop and the different stories were about the real people that are playing those pe like characters oh, yeah. Yeah. It's very personal. For Luna, I mean, she didn't originate Mui, but like, I'm sure most of it applied to herself. Oh, yeah. Same for Kevin and for Min and Boyong, but it's it's just like, the show is so specific to these people and they were able to just explore that within themselves and then show up with their authentic selves um, and really just see, everyone was able to see that it was real. It wasn't putting on a face of a mm -hmm anything it was like for everyone on the stage it was real um and believable and just amazing to witness and i'm so glad i was able to witness it because it might not have been so happy it... you're there too yeah oh thank you for saying that now i think jason kim did an amazing job like personalizing the, the characters like i remember there was one point in the um rehearsal process where we just sat down in a circle and he asked us to share our stories one by one and then from that like he was able to really personalize their characters and make it feel like us you know so yeah he, he did a great job doing that he did it with the boys too and the men so it was, yeah it was very real for sure yeah definitely and do you have one favorite memory throughout the entire K-pop experience? I mean, that's so hard to say, but I do have to ask. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, I have so many. Oh, I have so many. Um, I think seeing K-pop up on the marquee the first time, that was very special. This was before we started rehearsals. I actually, I went with Johnny. Mm -hmm. and we took pictures together because you know John has been there since the very beginning as well so yeah. we were just like this is it it's happening <laughs> can you believe it it's happening it's up like we're doing it that was very special um and then I mean I have so many memories with my girls I miss them so much uh we had let's see I mean, there's a lot of funny ones during tech. <laughs> it makes me laugh like nonstop. Oh gosh, it's so funny. Um, I'm trying to think. I think that first that first preview that we had in front of an audience that was pretty insane. Like I kept pinching myself because I couldn't believe that we were there and we were on Broadway doing K-pop. Like it was, it felt so 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 surreal to me at that time. Um, Looking back, I still can't believe that we did it. I'm, I'm just so happy we got to, even though we didn't get a longer run. Um, we did it. Like we we uh, broke some sort of glass ceiling. We made it happen. Like we made history. Did something that's never been done before. So I'm really proud. I'm really proud that we got to do that. Um, I'm I'm gonna have to look back in my pictures. There's too many. There's too many. Um, <laughs> I remember opening night that was uh we were like it was really really cold and I remember we had to take do our step and repeat right outside the theater yeah and I don't think we had the space heaters working so all of us were just like freezing <laughs> it was so so cold and I, I I feel like I got sick like the following day after the show I was not <laughs> feeling I was not feeling well during that show opening night oh I was like you could ask the cast. I was like, oh, oh my God. they were like, oh my gosh, are you okay? And I was just like praying that I made it through because I thought I was going to pass out because I was like shivering and cold. And also there was so much adrenaline because of, you know, it was opening night, but made it. <laughs> and um, yeah, it was, I mean, it's, it, it was such an amazing, amazing experience for sure. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I remember the cold. <laughs> it was. <laughs> That were you there opening night Ashley no I don't think I was so. only yeah, you came towards the end yeah the last two, but I don't know if I told you that on the last I was only supposed to go to the second to last one but then yeah. on the last one I got up and just went to the theater to try and get a cancellation ticket because yeah. it sold out and so I got up like super early I like waited for four hours in the cold 
And I mean, I'm from California. I don't know how to deal with the cold. Oh, no. I, oh, yeah. It was a cold yeah. winter, that 2022. Yeah. It was an insane. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Very yeah. much. And then I got to buy my ticket at like half hour before the show. Wow. So like I almost didn't make it in. <laughs> this was the last show, right? Yeah. The very oh. last show. Like a group. Oh, yeah. That one was epic. That one was we had it was packed we had people like all up in the standing room too oh that was so sad <laughs> oh but it was beautiful beautiful memory for sure I think yeah. that one was streamed yes uh, the online yeah, yeah. yeah the very last one yeah but that was like the craziest memory and just the mm -hmm. best ever um and then right after that I mean you kind of took a break for a minute and then you got cast you know. in show oh my gosh yes I was so lucky I um I actually had heard about here lies love in or like end of November um so I I actually went in for my first audition around that time this was before we had heard about k-pop closing um so at that point I was like if I got here I don't know I don't know k-pop keeps going like I I really don't know like depends like you know on, on like what role I, I would get and like all these I mean I wasn't sure but I, I went in anyway because um yeah I got I got an appointment to go in and I had heard about the show I know it's a Filipino show and I was like oh, this is gonna be fun this this is pretty cool so I uh I went in for that and and then k-pop happened and or it ended and I had to grieve for a moment and but I was still you know it's crazy I actually so my agents called me um, when I found out about K-pop closing and they said, so we have good news and bad news. What do you want to hear first? And I said, bad news, so just give it to me. I said, okay, so the bad news is that um, K-pop is closing. And I was like, what? And they go, the good news is you got a call back for your life, love. <laughs> and I was like, wait, what? I'm so... Can feel like I I didn't know how to feel in that moment I was like oh my gosh like it was like kind of cushioning but also like I I couldn't process it and then when I got to the theater our producers had told all of us together and it was just it was the strangest strangest thing so I knew your life love was a possibility but I didn't know that I was you know gonna book it for sure so but then when I finally did get it I was like wow that's crazy it's uh two Broadway shows and but like less than a year very lucky <laughs> very very lucky so I mean that kind of distracted me though and I got to I got to I started rehearsals for that and um it was it was so lovely um but yeah there you know obviously there's a part of me especially when people are like you know I wish K-pop had you know a longer run I wish it got the run it deserved like all these things it's definitely very sad and then you see your friends leave like Boyang, who's based in Korea. I mean, that's, it's so sad. I remember Artemis, we met and we recorded all of our dance, like we did like a dance rehearsal for all of our songs. Oh, Just cause like, I don't think, I think I posted like one on TikTok. <laughs> I asked Kate for it. I was like, Kate, I'm saying I want to post something. I want to be more active on TikTok. That was my attempt. I posted like a practice video of Artemis. <laughs> Oh. Um, I haven't posted anything since but it, I mean we had so much fun because I you know we I, I think the girls like we really loved each other and Boyong was leaving like the following day so we made sure that we got to meet up we did all our dances just because and then yeah <laughs> so much fun well, I'm glad it's it's you know commemorated in some way of just yeah. that, that energy there was nothing like it <laughs> yeah five of you guys together and I mean now Kate's in Kate's back in California in Orange County yeah. yep that's right but he's still in the city and and Min is in Korea I think too and everyone's kind of going everywhere <laughs> yeah everyone's bouncing all over the place now yeah. so but I mean yeah. like I'm so happy you had those girls together and then you had a new it was such a good group I was so I felt so happy I'm very lucky that it's a good group you know because it's uh it's tough when when 
and this is not to say that I've had like, you know, experience like bad eggs before, but it was such a good group of girls. And, we, you know, that I, I, I don't like that um, competitive nature or something that like naturally happens sometimes, especially like when you're like within a, you, like that setting. Um, but we were, it was very supportive, you know, and everyone knew what they were bringing. And um, yeah, we were like each other's biggest cheerleaders. So that was just such an amazing feeling. And I'm so relieved that that was the dynamic because sometimes you hear about stories where it's not that way. I mean, yeah, I, I, I heard like sometimes um, in K-pop girl groups, like there can be a lot of rivalries, but it's just, it wasn't the case. You know, we really loved each other and supported each other. So I'm so love. glad. And then, and then you went straight in and had another set of, of people that you loved so much. And yes. Oh, I saw that you did an interview with Sarah. So yes. Okay. And also, I just did my one sister. with sister and Christina. I did two days oh, ago. Christina. Oh my gosh, my sisters. <laughs> I love them. Yes. But it's like you got to, you know, you left one girl group and kind of came into, in a way, another set of people. That's right. Oh, yeah. Um, sisters <laughs> for life. Oh my, I love, I'm, I mean, again, got very lucky with the people in Here Lies Love. Like, it, it, they're, I mean, yeah, I got really lucky. Everyone's, everyone was amazing and I got really close. Like they're my sisters too, like Sarah, Christina, everyone, like Shay, Gina, Renee, Carol, like all of them. <laughs> There's Jazzy, Jasmine, who I saw in six, like a few. Oh my gosh. I tried to go see her. Ashley, you have to see her. <laughs> I could not get it. I'm not going to say anymore, but just you have to. It's insane. That, that show's amazing. Mm -hmm. I will try. I'm like, I have seen six, so like a couple times now, just because like, you know, a lot of- Have you seen it with this cat? No, I'm like, I need oh to. Gosh. They are- They were on tour. They are, cutting. they are sensational. Like, I'm not even exaggerating. Each one is so on point. Like, I was blown away. Well, and I think, I think one time I posted that you should be in six. I think I put- oh, yeah. <laughs> Passing of you as I think Howard. I was like, Julie, when is it gonna happen? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I, I um I have been called in. I I've gone in many many times, um, <laughs> but you know we'll we'll see. <laughs> it hasn't happened yet. I think you would be perfect. Hopefully it'll work. That's very out. sweet. I hope so too. Yeah. Someday things are so complicated. So hopefully right. some um it can happen. <laughs> <laughs> Here lies love going back. Did did you have a favorite moment in the show? Oh, yeah. Um favorite moments. I I love the opening, like the American trog, like when we're in the like the club vibe. I love doing that. I don't know why. It was it was because it was so different from the rest of the show. Yeah. And, and it's like set everything up and yeah, I really loved that. Um what else? I mean, there were everything. The the thing about Here Lies Love was it is the most, because it was 90 minutes straight, no intermission. It was so incredible and chaotic backstage. My backstage choreo was insane. Like I was probably doing more backstage than I was. I mean, or it might've been equal, but I was running. Like I was constantly running up and down those stairs because I had to be up in the mezzanine a lot like um, the satellite stages so I was constantly running back up and forth like oh my gosh it was it was insane I, crazy I, I even showed my family I was like so this is what I do every show my mom's like oh that's why you're losing so much weight <laughs> um, but oh yeah no it was so much fun and that it went by so quickly too but I think I had so many favorite moments. I think the ensemble moments, because I would have like little things, little moments with everyone in the cast. That was always fun. Um, and then the end when we're like together, like after um, Aurora sings, like holding up that lava and singing, that was pretty epic. Mm -hmm. like, there's so many things, like I can't even, so many things, so many things. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, this mm -hmm. was quite a change from going from K-pop to that because K-pop, mm -hmm. you, got, you got some breaks in the show. Oh, yeah, we did. We got breaks. But it was different, too, because K-pop was, sorry, this is my dog. Oh, um, my name is Balin. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> this is the one I was like, are you okay with dogs? Yeah. Um, so 
I get that to. K-pop. This is my boy. It's eleven. <laughs> so, um, K-pop was different in the sense that uh, when I was on stage, it was like I felt like we were doing like suicides, like sprints, <laughs> you know, because we were nonstop moving, singing. Like it was just we did more definitely and it was like full out like the you you saw like the dancing and then on top of that you're sing you're singing live so you can't get like a full breath so you know you really had to your stamina had and our fitness had to be like up there um uh and it was exhausting in that sense and and there was a lot of singing too and the singing had to be like on point like when, whenever we would sing so that was, it was, it was, I would say that K-pop was like way, even though I wasn't constantly like on stage and like moving, it was more, there was like more pressure and um, the stakes felt like a little bit higher because we, there's like a perfectionism, right? That comes with K-pop and, and we had to execute that. And, you know, I was talking to Min and Bo Young about it and they were like, you know, the crazy thing is like, even in the real K-pop world, like a lot of things are sweetened. Mm -hmm. and uh, you get a lot of support so that you can focus on the dancing um it's they're like it's not like this like where everything is sung live I'm like welcome to Broadway baby <laughs> like we gotta do it you know so they were like it, they were like wow like, this is yeah we're like really doing it and um but yeah na like normally that's not really like a thing I guess like oh yeah it, it's, it's very it's very yeah. much like lip sync that's like exactly exactly I was like yeah I know I think like we would be like chewed up and like spat out <laughs> if we tried to do that on Broadway <laughs> but um yeah so we were doing something that not even like k-pop stars do so it was um really uh doing something no one's ever really done before eight times a week it's like, crazy yeah it was kind of like k-pop was like every time you're on stage it's like a sprint and then here lives love is kind of like just like a fast <laughs> run all the way throughout <laughs> yeah exactly like a different <laughs> energy but both were so so <laughs> energy <laughs> exactly yeah exactly so like here lies love was just like a like a little half marathon like every time k-pop was like many sprints <laughs> but like full out every time yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. And do you have a favorite costume? Because you had a lot of really good ones. And obviously you're like the TV. In your life's love. Oh yeah. I love I do love the TV very much. I love I love our white dresses in um the Here Lies Love. I love those too. <laughs> I love those. I really love those. Um I, I would say like those are were definitely like my favorite. And I love the blue lady dresses. Oh um, yeah. I only got to wear it once, but you know, with like the butterfly wings. Yeah. Love the blue lady dresses. Um yeah. I would say those are my favorite. And the Santa Ninas. When oh. I'm up that satellite and I'm like I'm like pretty high up there and I'm also on the edge of that little stage. I was on the edge and I kid you not, Ashley, I developed a fear of heights because of that. <laughs> I am like because I was like I had to look up into the light. And when you're that high up already, like I didn't see anything below me. So like, I was just like, I would shake and I, you know, I really had to like focus, but it was terrifying. So yeah, I absolutely, I, I talked to Sarah was like, oh yeah, girl, me too. <laughs> we like developed a fear of heights. It's fine though. <laughs> Cause the first time I saw the show was when I was in the mezzanine and then I didn't sit any other times that I saw it. But like, yeah. I did have a great view of like all the times that you were up there and I was like, mm -hmm. there's yeah, like every single time oh. <laughs> yeah so, did you see me shaking I or did I know, but... okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, kept, I kept it okay <laughs> well I remember that moment because I had known I think the only people I'd known prior to like seeing here lies love was you and then Aaron Alcaraz um mm -hmm. and you guys you were both up there quite a bit and so I was like hey yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Aaron's up there. Always. Aaron like starts the show up there. I remember I was like dropping off my water bottle like in the stairs where we go up, and I saw Aaron. This was like in the middle of our run, and I was like, "Oh, I'm, like are you up here?" And the opening, he's like, "Yeah." I'm like, "Wow, up here a lot." Aaron's also like constantly going up and down, up and down. Yeah, 
the track i mean the tracks in here lies love like just oh my gosh the stamina you have to have to be able to go everywhere all the time yeah. for the swings i'm like i could not even imagine trying to figure that out oh my gosh Most they were so incredible like knew the show like carol and renee but then jello and aj i don't think mm -hmm. aj knew the show but um mm -hmm. jello didn't really know but he's like an expert swing so i'm like if right. it craziness trying oh my god our swings were so amazing it's so 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 amazing i mean carol saved our butts like so many times like she i remember we had like some injuries happen halfway through the show and i saw a mid show swing on yeah. Yeah. yeah renee too would step in anytime yeah um uh, yeah. angel i mean every they were so amazing it's insane yeah but i i could I, I i mean that's like that's a lot of like that's a lot of pressure but also so exciting like the adrenaline yeah. is like you know when you you're like oh my gosh it's happening like oh my I have to go in. I have to go away <laughs> I remember this happened like in London when I was doing Saigon um I think Eva got sick and um her she had like she lost her voice like halfway through act one and um, I just remember I was about to go on for Morning of the Dragon. I don't know if you're familiar with the show, but I was about to go on for Morning of the Dragon. And I just feel these people like yanking me off like before I could go on. Oh and they start taking my clothes off and they start rubbing dirt on my face. And I'm like, they're like, you're on, you're on for Kim. And I'm like, what's going on? And like, I go to the dressing room and Eva's there, and she's just like, yeah, you're on. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what? And I'm like trying to comfort Eva. They're like, no time for that, Julia. Let's go, like you gotta go. Yeah. And I just remember, like, my adrenaline was like, so, I feel like I could have lifted a car. Like, it was just so crazy. Um, and I know that Carol, like, because she's gone on a lot, like, halfway through. I, I know, like, she, like, feels that as well because the stakes are so high. And, like, you know, your people are relying on you to, like, fill in, like, immediately and to keep the show running and for it to still be a good show because there's a paying audience out there waiting for you to complete the story so yeah it's um it's exciting but also so stressful <laughs> like I don't think I could be a, I'd be so stressed out all the time <laughs> the swings for k-pop and for here lies love there was just so much to do and for k-pop I don't even think I told you this but one time I had like a dream that I was yeah. somehow a swing for Artemis but like it was before I actually saw the show and mm -hmm. so I didn't know anything <laughs> and so yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh that's terrifying I've had dreams like that too I was Except like I was in Artemis and in my dream I still wasn't sure what was happening and they were like just go and I was like uh. <laughs> let me get my let me look at the script what's going on here yeah 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 yeah, yeah that was I've had dreams like that too <laughs> what is that where is that <laughs> where's that coming from subconsciously Similar, similar minds, I guess. Yes. Uh, I wanted to ask you about your Therno kind of pantsuit for opening, because I know a lot of people had different stories for getting it shipped from either the Philippines or different designers that they wanted to uplift in their um, in their opening night outfits. So what was the story behind yours? Yeah, so mine uh, was from a designer named Pablo Cabahug, and he was actually a friend of my aunt. and. Um, I wanted, I, I did want to have something traditional, but also like I wanted to feel like powerful and, and modern in a sense. So that was his design, the jumpsuit with the the Terno sleeves. So um, yeah, that was that was him. And um, my family brought it from the Philippines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You really had, you know, you had the you had the real deal getting it from the Philippines. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and it was so so gorgeous. I remember I I remember seeing you there. Yeah, I went to opening. Just I wasn't going to the show. I was I had seen it on that Tuesday. It opened on like the Thursday or something, um, and so I just went to go take pictures and see what was going. So on. sweet. I know. I remember seeing you like after I did like the step and repeat. Like, <laughs> here. Yeah. Oh. Gosh. Everyone had their the the sleeves and their gowns. Everyone had their sleeves. Oh, yeah. and like mm -hmm. in front of in the jeepney too. I mean, when is that ever going to happen on Broadway again? Of having jeepney oh, in on the streets of New York um, for it Broadway. So <laughs> it was so so cool. I was I was surreal. I mean, I could not. I couldn't believe it. I was so. I, I just felt so proud and 
honestly, the thing that made me my favorite part about Here Lies Love, I would have to say, is um, meeting the people after, like at Stage Door, like especially the Filipinos who came, who had lived through it and had something to say about how how meaningful it was that that we were um, performing the show and um, also hearing stories from my family. Like my mom said, there's just, you know, our, our people like are coming and, and, and wanting to support and like, however, however much the tickets are like, it's okay. Like, let's just get it because this is only happening like this one time, like our story is being told on a Broadway stage. Like this is history. Like we have to watch. So, you know, Filipinos from everywhere, all different backgrounds and walks of life were just coming to support. Like that was, that meant everything to me. Like I, I could like, I get emotional just thinking about it because I am like, I remember like that's, that's why I do what I do. Like that's why I'm here because you could see uh, how proud they were. You know, I don't think, you know, coming from the Philippines, it, it's, uh, it's like, yes, there's like Leia, right? Leia Salonga, who is like this legend and she made us so proud. Like she really raised her flag and, but she also, this was the first time she was playing a Filipino character mm -hmm. on the way. She's played like every other, you know, she played Vietnamese, like Chinese, Japanese, she's, but you know, but this was the first time she was, she got to be like herself mm -hmm. as a Filipino. And that, I mean, it took this long. <laughs> so, uh, who knows like what another Filipino story is going to be told so the fact that so many Filipinos got to come and see it is pretty pretty awesome and I think my favorite memories is seeing their expressions and just how happy they were how much they got to relate to the story because some of them lived through it some of them just heard stories from their families either way they were so proud mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I remember, I remember the first time I saw it being up in the Mez and I was looking around and seeing all of these Filipino people that probably would not go see a Broadway show otherwise, other than yeah. themselves on a Broadway stage. And to see the stage door like wrapping all the way around and going mm -hmm. so far and seeing the support that was there. Um, and for everyone, I remember all these people, like even with Leia, you know, telling her how much, and me included, um, telling her how mm -hmm. much like her just her performance and just being her meant to us and just what it meant to see people like ourselves represented on a stage that is not usually um there for us and it was just such a special energy and i remember like especially mm -hmm. in the time that you can tell how many filipinos are in the audience when ariel starts cursing in tagalog um <laughs> yeah it, that's the moment where you can tell you can tell and I, going home. I went home um like to my hotel and like looked it up the first time I saw it I was like what was that and I was like oh I see what's going on here. <laughs> that is hilarious and I love that for the Filipinos because it's like a little yeah. insane joke it is yeah. knows what it is yeah 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 I know it's kind of like funnily enough the word that you take away from the show <laughs> 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 curse word because it's like you're right it's that moment where people are like what is that what does that mean you know because it's like a little inside joke yeah it's like, and it's one of the few lines that are actually in Tagalog in the show and so yeah. you're like okay I'm gonna remember that and go yeah. find it out later why were people laughing why were people cackling in that moment <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, I mean, for you what was the hardest part of being in the show because i mean you've talked about already your backstage track is insane um yes. so like, what was yeah. the hardest part of just going, being the main show going into it okay so i don't know if you saw like an earlier version of the show but like the dovey beam scene was originally um like a huge projection on camera and it was going to be like blasted like it was like there was a huge projection like in the upper mez and it was kind of like a like a sex tape thing <laughs> and there was like a bed and it was like very like yeah it was like that um I was very I've never done it like <laughs> that was the first time like my first time playing a mistress or whatever so I was like uh very nervous going into it because if you listen to that recording it's very explicit like it's very very you know um and that, that that's real that's like um real what do you call it um 
Transcript, I guess. Transcript. That's right. That that's it's all real. And also it goes on for like hundreds of pages if you read the real one and it gets, you know, a lot racier. But um just reading it even for the first time just out loud, I was like, just like my mom's gonna see this. <laughs> my mom's gonna see my brother's gonna see this. Oh my god, my grandma might see this. Um and like Leia, because she's known me since I was a little girl, like, you know, the first time to I remember I was like, don't like go over, like, don't look. <laughs> I was like, don't please. And she was just like giggling. She's like, I'm going to tell your mom. <laughs> I was like, oh, don't. I'm like so embarrassed. But um, I think it, that was probably the hardest, but I got over that very quickly. That happened early on in the process. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, the team just made me feel so comfortable. And um, Renee Albulario, who played Dovi, um, in the previous iteration she like reassured me and she showed me she's like do you want me to like walk through it with Jose first and also Kuya Jose my Kuya Jose Lana he's was so amazing like I had no um, I immediately like wasn't nervous as soon as I uh, started working with him because he was so comforting and so protective like more protective than I was of myself I remember during tech because you know you have to stand there and they have to light it yeah. he would always yeah. like take his shirt off and like put it on me and like he's like get a robe you know like he made sure that I was always like felt comfortable and he's like you do not have to show more skin than you have to in the you know you, there's no reason so you just you know feel comfortable if there's something you need just say it like it's okay and so yeah I, I kind of got over that but leading up to that it made me very nervous. So I think the first time uh we read the scene out loud I was like oh. <laughs> I was like getting like choked up because I was like this is very explicit um but yeah it was it was cool we recorded it in uh the bathroom of a church and uh yeah that's a picture from that's, it. yep we yeah, had the one that Alex posted <laughs> yeah that's the the same one that's what we used so yeah um but then we changed the scene um because I think they wanted to like update it so that's why I ended up in the gallery on that like little catwalk up there yeah but yeah. before that I think I have a picture I'll have to send it to you I'll show you I'm like sitting on a bed with my wig like this like and it's like on the huge screen like up in the mess like I, I have a picture of it I'll send it to you <laughs> that's originally what it was supposed to be that's so shocking because I even remember sitting first time I can't remember if I saw you the first time no I did I did and then the second time I saw it, I think Carol was in for Do mm -hmm. uh, Dovi, but um I remember seeing it and I was like oh my god that's Julia <laughs> and like I, yeah. I didn't know this, like, all of the story yet like I had read the history and Wikipedia yeah. stuff, like before seeing the show but I was like oh my gosh like I did not realize it until in the mm -hmm. moment and mm -hmm. to hear that it was even more than that, I was like, oh my gosh. Um, oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. It was like a little bit more than that before. Like I had to like climb on top of him, like on the bed. Like it was, it was a lot. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm actually like really happy with how it turned out because the original scene was on the, um, the stage that was like closer to the balcony. So honestly, like, a lot of people didn't even see what was happening. Like they would have to look at the monitors, but with the way that they had decided to stage it in the final version with us up on the catwalk, everyone got to see. Mm -hmm. So I think that worked way better for yeah. sure. Oh, and it was such a fascinating thing to just, you know, as an actor, you're like, you mm -hmm. might be uncomfortable, but knowing that like a good team was around you and for Jose mm -hmm. to be so kind and, and protective, that's like the best thing. <laughs> hope for in that time. he's so protective he was like make sure you like I remember our stage managers like Cheryl she was like so we have two robes for you I was like I don't have time to wear a robe like I actually don't she's like yeah but Jose asked for it for you so I was like that's so sweet like who does that that's so sweet I was like yeah. I don't have time though I need to like run right after this and go on stage <laughs> and then get into my next costume I don't have time to have to even like put on like either robe on each side but it was so sweet it was like it's there though if you need it you know if you're not feeling comfortable yeah. no jose there's... has like very kuya energy of... <laughs> very kuya. oh yeah he was our kuya for yeah. sure yeah. <laughs> and and what was it like for you i know you've mentioned leia a couple times but what was it mm -hmm. like guiding and being in a show together because you performed together and she supported you in all of your different mm -hmm. issues and journeys and you were in miss saigon which i mean yes you know, following her footsteps. She sent me like she I remember like 
before my first Kim show, I remember like her sending me like, like tips and reminders. Like she's just so, I, I adore that woman so much. Like <laughs> I idolized her like my whole life. And, and it's just, it's surreal to me that I got to be in a Broadway show with her. Like that's, that's like wild. I, I mean, I, I still, I was like telling my mom, like, that's crazy. Like I'm in a show with my, like the thing that she does, like, best I get to be in her orbit <laughs> like I mean I get to be in her environment and watch her and learn from her like it's I it was um it was amazing but also like she's so much fun like she really she's um she gets the job done but she also has so much fun and she is so sweet and makes everyone feel so included and like loves to talk and just you know hang out so it's like she makes things feel very like chill um yeah but she's amazing I mean she serves every single time but she also works incredibly hard and I saw that like every time I would use the bathroom like in the downstairs house left area she would be warming up and we would have just started the show like that's you know her discipline she's has her process and I'm like that's that's amazing like that's what you know she knows what she's doing clearly so she's a legend but yeah it was it's amazing for sure yeah it was a dream come true I remember so I'm the umbrella behind her (laughs) in the um when the platform starts moving during flowers I'm the umbrella directly behind her and I um, I remember just like in her last show, I was like shaking. It was so sad. I was crying because I was like, oh, I can't believe she's leaving us. I know. Hopefully it can happen again. Maybe reunite again. I know. I made her pinky promise me before she left. I was like, pinky promise me you're going to be back. And she did. She was like, if if it's, yes, yes. She's like, I'll be back. I'll be back. If it's still running, like, I'll, I'll be back. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, my light is like, oh no. This is my selfie light. Oh no. Oh my gosh, this is like, we're like at a disco. I it stops. Okay. I mean, it kind of works mm. for the show. <laughs> I know. Um, this is a fun question. What is your favorite Filipino food? Because I grew up with so much Filipino food all around me. My, my tita, she would always make like Filipino spaghetti, make like the yeah. fried chicken, make um, sinigang, like shit, you know. Yeah. Just yeah. all of this stuff for us um but what is your favorite wow. oh my gosh mine is very simple my favorite is adobo I love my adobo and the way that I had it um growing up the way they would make it is like they would add little brown sugar so it's like a little sweet oh, yeah oh so that's how I like my adobo um and then desserts like of course turon is my favorite mm-hmm. um what else do I like I love Jollibee <laughs> I love I love pancit but you know what I like so there is this because this is what I grew up with um the pancit that I like is like the um it's this instant like it's in a pack it's like in a lucky me pack do you know what I'm talking about it's like an instant <laughs> okay. that was my thing so like that I would have like a little Tupperware that I would bring to k-pop every day and that was like my food like I would have pancit it was like noodles basically and um Amy knew that she'd be like what do we have today she's like pencil nice <laughs> and like that was my thing every day but it sustained me it's yeah. actually it was a really great food that sustained me and like I didn't feel like sluggish or you know too even though it was like uh you know pretty carby it, it gave me a lot of energy and I love it I really do love my pencil um but yeah adobo would be like the number one number that's one. my favorite <laughs> for sure the power of pensit um, when you're getting ready. Yes. To away. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The power of pensit. That's what I was eating. Probably should have been eating a little healthier, but hey, you're moving. I mean, I was burning so many calories. You know, I need. I needed that sustenance. <laughs> Definitely did for that show. My mm-hmm. God, um, and I. I mean, I love. Filipino food so much it brings people together and the fact that the cast had so many potlucks and had an actual lechon oh, and- in theater that is crazy I think I've said this to everyone when is that gonna ever happen again where there's an actual lechon inside <laughs> you know, 
so crazy. We had, we love to eat like nonstop. We were like constantly eating. I mean, that's how Filipinos bond. You know, we love to eat. So it was the same in our cast. Like Bunso Nathan, yeah, he yeah. cooked for us all the time. Him and Jello, we had a rice cooker on our floor, you know, and we had, we'd make like coconut rice. And then Nathan would like make us some sort of um, ulam, like a, like a meat or, you know, whatever that we would just put on the rice. It was so sweet. Yeah. I, um, it, you, you never get, got hungry in that theater when Here Lies Love was there because there was always food. Always. We always had food. Like you never want to be in another Broadway cast again where, unless they have. <laughs> yeah. Constantly <laughs> eating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. so you're burning it all up too so yeah, it's oh yeah it's all good it, we're constantly moving anyway so it's all good <laughs> Oh, like the cast and everyone talking about their favorite food and how fed they were i'm like that's just the dream is like you want to do what you love and be fed while you're doing it um, oh, yeah. exactly. exactly and then also since you mentioned the word bunso i do need to tell you hmm. in taiwanese bunso means trash <laughs> oh my god because <laughs> I was telling my mom, I was like, I'm going to interview Nathan. He's the bunso of the cast, which is the youngest. And she's like, like, you know, that means trash in Taiwanese. And I was like, oh, my gosh, because like my grandparents oh. apparently use it to like as a joke, like for all take out the bunso. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. and, and just and just so for the viewers, bunso means uh, youngest one. Yeah. Like the youngest person yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh I, I told nathan that too when i interviewed mm -hmm. him and he was like that is the funniest thing i've heard today i was like yeah That's hilarious oh yeah <laughs> you know different languages are so funny um how yeah. different things how they translate yeah no i i know i know there's like so many of those too like in certain languages like the translation in another language is like something completely different or like right in um the, the dessert puto and <laughs> yeah 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 puto or um like leche is um milk right in spanish but in the philippines we use it more as like a swear word <laughs> <laughs> it's like Weird. there's so, so many things that different cultures do and it's i think it's so funny um yeah like interesting to think about um yeah. for another question that has nothing to do with food um <laughs> what did it feel like for you in your two broadway shows to be portraying a filipina as a filipina and getting to just be your heritage in a show since that doesn't happen very often i mean you were in miss saigon as kim and playing that role and you know putting right. on that persona but then just to be able to not have to do that as much and mm -hmm. or at all in here lies love and k-pop what was that like it was pretty awesome because i don't you know i feel like i can just be me and um not worry so much about um whether or not i'm like having to feel like an imposter or you know uh, like bringing dishonor to it and, and not like doing it with full integrity like I didn't have to worry about that because I can just be and that's such a, an amazing gift and it can leaves room to focus on so many other things um when it came to the performance so yeah I mean thank you for bringing that up I, I didn't it, I never really thought of that um but that's yeah well, that's pretty great <laughs> it's a pretty a pretty awesome feeling for sure yeah it's such a such an achievement mm -hmm. Broadway just to be yourself and and just not have to you know it is acting but you yeah, know for it's sure. cool self to a character that's pretty unique and pretty special and since it doesn't happen yeah. for Asian people that much it's like to see mm -hmm and everyone else just be able to be their full selves on stage it's like that's the only that's the kind of joy that you want to see it's just yeah. in that show where here lies love all filipino cast first time ever on broadway yeah. such a such a like a milestone of where hopefully we're headed in this industry um oh, so what was it like being a part of such a revolutionary show in the way that the theater was? Because that has never happened before um, mm -hmm. on Broadway, where there is the like the, the furthest thing, the next closest thing was maybe like K-pop, where people are coming mm -hmm. like, 
styles maybe, but definitely not the same as Here Lies Love, where the audience is actually moving and getting to experience it in so many different ways. And what was it like, I guess, rehearsing for it first before the audience came in and just trying to think of what it would be like? Right. So we were very fortunate in that we got to practice with the set um, from previous productions in the rehearsal space. And I remember thinking to myself, thank goodness we have these sets because could you imagine doing this on tape? <laughs> There's no way. I I would have been so confused. So thank goodness we had, I think we used the, the set from um, the production in, uh, where was it? Chicago? Or Seattle? Seattle, sorry, that's the one. <laughs> um, so we had that set and it was very similar, same dimensions and everything to what we work with in the theater. So that was great. Um, but while we were using that set, our set in the Broadway theater was being built. Mm -hmm. So um, it was a, a really easy transition um, other than, you know, like the mud flaps and, and then also, uh, seeing our uh, backstage traffic like going up the stairs and all those things um, but I mean the experience was incredible the team I I feel so lucky to have gotten to work with this team they're just incredible like geniuses like Alex Timbers David Horns, David Byrne Annie B. Person it, it was just such an amazing team and I kid you not like the last day before um our last rehearsal I think before opening night like when they kind of leave us that's like when the creative team goes mm -hmm. I never cried so hard Aww. because I and that's never happened before and that's not to say like oh I didn't love my previous creative teams no it's just I never experienced like working with these people who were so brilliant and um, I've just felt so inspired being around. It was sad seeing them go. And um, yeah, I never cried so hard. Um, so I think that says enough about like, yeah, that experience and like building this new thing with them. It was just, it was amazing. It's funny. I wasn't the only one too. Christina was crying. I was like, why are we crying so much? Like, it gets, cause we love them, you know, like we, we really watch being around people who are just so brilliant and geniuses basically and and are, are who are also so kind and easy to work with like and who believe in you it's um it's it's very special and um I it is, just doesn't happen all the time so yeah it was really sad to see them go I was like oh you're leaving us by ourselves like we need you <laughs> don't leave Alex <laughs> but yeah it was um very very special yeah no, but I was so happy to see that David Byrne was there so much um, so much he loved and always on the floor yes I mean always I was on the floor after I sat the first time and then I did the floor the first time I was like I'm never going back to sitting like right. and I yeah. did yeah I, like, I actually want to know what that was like. Like, what was the difference between Mez and Floor? Like, yeah, well, what was the difference in the experience for you? Yeah. I mean, I saw it first in the mezzanine. And I remember I was like sitting, I was like the rear Mez, but like the sort of front of the rear Mez on the left. Yeah. And so um, I remember because I have not great vision. Um, <laughs> yeah. It was a little bit hard for me to see faces because it was so far mm -hmm. away for the front of the stage, like when they mm -hmm. started aerials at the very front. And then in the middle, like it made sense and, you know, I could see, but, and then when people came <laughs> to the front, it was so fun because I was like, oh, I can see everything. Um, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, this is fun, but what's it like down there? Like, I was so curious. Mm -hmm. And that's when I went and <laughs> I was like, I need to see this again. Cause I was in New York for one week, um, just like yeah. seeing shows and doing Broadway con and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, so then I went and bought a ticket for the floor. I went alone, my family, you know, they were doing other things and getting, you know, doing busy things. And I was like, yeah. I'm going to go and I'm going to do the floor and I'm by myself. By the And so I remember seeing it. I did not know what I was doing. Um, yeah. It's the path I what learned you were getting yourself into. <laughs> Learned that very like like a little bit later after I hung out with Aaliyah a lot. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> Aaliyah knew. He taught me where to go. But the first time I was just like experiencing it, 
it was as if I experienced the show for the first time being on the floor. Wow. It was so transformative. I was like, what is going on? You know, getting to see right. everything close up. And I remember for one, one thing that's very distinct was for please don't. Um, once I figured out like the path, I would end up further. But the first time I saw it, I was right next to the platform where Ariel is singing. Right. And I was looking up at her, right. having her like diva moment. Yes. Like, what is going on right now? This is the coolest yeah. thing ever. This is amazing. Yeah. And yeah. then the time I did go up on the platform, like later on when, um, right before, like just ask the flowers and or gate 37 and just ask the flowers and getting to see Leia come like forward and all of you come forward mm -hmm. on the umbrellas um and i only did that once where i went on the platform because you do not end up in the front at the end right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> getting to experience it a couple different ways is so interesting and like mm -hmm. i wish you had gotten to experience it too yeah, yeah. fascinating of like what's going on you could tell some people didn't know what was going on or they mm -hmm. just went away with it but everyone was having fun and like I was like singing and dancing the energy and is different right when you're like up close with the actors because it's almost like you feed off we feed off your energy as well and you feed off ours yeah so I can imagine how it's a completely different experience I, I also know that some people actually did enjoy sitting up in the mess mm -hmm. um but they also had never experienced the floor like the first time my mom experienced the floor she thought she never would because she's not like she doesn't like being in crowds like that and it's either yeah. <laughs> yeah like you'd look at it firsthand and be like mm, I'm not sure that's for me yeah. but then she experienced it and she actually really enjoyed it so <laughs> oh. um yeah so I I I the, when I got swung out I watched it from the floor and I was I had I was like living my best life <laughs> I was like screaming the whole time but um I never experienced watching it anywhere else um but I'm happy if I mean if I picked one seat to watch it from it would have been the floor for sure yeah no I I mean I don't really like large crowds or like mm -hmm. or super loud sounds like when I went to mm -hmm. Park, I had earplugs to make sure right, I right, right. don't blow your ears yeah <laughs> Your life's love like I was so into it and I'm an introvert like very much an introvert maybe okay. it's not visible but definitely am um mm -hmm. and I felt so comfortable on the floor I wasn't freaked out okay. by the crowds like I felt safe also because I was in the space of theater and in right. the space of a musical something that was familiar right, to me. right 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 that was like the theater in you that was like the performer yes. in you. that was like I feel home <laughs> You're like, I feel like I'm in the show. <laughs> <laughs> like, I am not. I mean, the other day, all these kids at my school were going to a Shrek rave. I'm like, I don't know if that's for me. <laughs> I don't know if I'm, you know, for that kind of vibe. But here lies love. Shrek rave. Wow, that sounds so fascinating. That, where I actually do feel comfortable and feel like I can. Right. In a safe space. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember um, during um, our, I don't know when it was during our texts or dress rehearsals or whatever, there was a, a time when I was watching from up in the mez. I think it might've been a dress rehearsal, like a cover run. And there were some people during Please Don't and they were like fist pumping and jumping as, as if, you know, it was the audience. And I remember being up in the mez and watching and like collectively, it looked like they were part of the show. like. You know, it was almost like I was watching a TV screen and like they were a part of it. Like they're supposed to be the party people, you know? So, um, yeah, but I think that like that's what, when you're down there, it's like you're you feel like an audience member and you're but you're like completely in it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I can see like how those who wouldn't have wanted to, to be like crowded, how that probably would have been better for them. But I don't know. For me, I was like, yeah, I want to be down there. Like that's 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 the place. Yeah. No, it was it was the best thing I mm -hmm. experienced. Where I said the I other. Love that. I'm so happy you were able to come, Ashley. Even though you're so busy with school. You know, it was a priority for me. I wanted to go and be there and try yeah. to experience it as much as I could. Um, and like I was at Anne Juliet in December. Um, mm -hmm. And I remember because obviously you know the songs, you know the words to these jukebox yeah. songs, and I felt so stuck. <laughs> oh. 
fair. I was like, I want to dance and I want to sing, but I don't do that in a normal Broadway show. Mm -hmm. And sitting and stuff. And I'm like, that's, that's valid. That's cool. I'm like, that's how I experience most theater. But now yeah. because I've experienced Here Lies Love and that immersiveness, I'm like, I can't go back anymore. <laughs> it's so fun. I mean, I could not believe the first time we walked into that theater our move-in day I was just in tears I was like this is crazy <laughs> I've been into the Broadway theater I mean I saw I've seen a few shows there I saw Saigon when it was in there and it's just it's a completely different space yeah and to look up it's completely different yeah, too to look up and see where the actual stage would have started you're like whoa that's cool I'm I'm yeah. like backstage <laughs> I know yeah and then it's only when you go up into the mez and you look up and see the chandeliers, you're like, yeah, yeah, this is the Broadway theater. We're, we're in the same place because it, it really doesn't feel like it, especially when you're on the floor. Mm -hmm. No, and I you, yeah, it was so cool. Oh, sorry, what were you going to say? Yeah, have you ever, did you ever get to go to like our, one of our disco nights? Like our... And unfortunately, they were always on like either a weekday or just, or some right. I wouldn't be able to go. But like I had a friend actually who knew um, Melody. She's in this girl in my MT yeah. class. She yeah. came, and saw the show as a guest, and and got to experience one of those nights. And I was like, that looks like so much fun. <laughs> it was so sick. It was insane. At one point, you're just like, this is not a Broadway theater. Like this has never happened before. A Broadway theater turned club afterwards. Like it was crazy. It was so epic. Yeah, I and have videos just, of it. Like all of you guys in your and and dancing and Our having people power shirts yeah, yeah. <laughs> so cool you guys are yeah the so awesome yeah Best, i think on broadway um <laughs> and your relationship with your culture change um while being in here lies love because I mean, you are from the philippines and from singapore and so mm -hmm. you are probably very much connected to um you know being asian and being filipino and to that aspect, but what did anything, what if anything changed while um, being in the show? Because I know some people were rediscovering it completely. Yeah, I think, um, I, I wouldn't really say anything changed. If anything, I think I just, I became more informed about my culture. It really, you know, I, I knew about the Marcuses vaguely, but like I said, I moved out of the Philippines when I was four and I, I grew up in Singapore. So um, I wasn't actually very familiar with that history, not entirely. Mm -hmm. So um, learning about our history was, it was very moving, heartbreaking, um, but I'm, 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 I consider myself very Filipina. Like I, I was born there, I would go back every summer. I'm like, I'm fluent in Tagalog and um, yeah, I'm, I'm, it's not like I was, um, I, I think it's different, like when you're Filipino American, like you're born here and like you don't go home often, but I am very much like uh, connected to the Philippines still in that sense where like I, I go home and, um, and my grandparents, my Lola is still there and I have family there. And um, yeah, so I, I don't think it changed. I think I just actually, no, it did change. I, I became even more proud to be Filipino. It just felt got even better yeah, it just got even better I became because you know sadly I dealt with like bullying growing up and I remember oh I mean it was for kids are mean and it was like for stupid reasons I don't even remember I blocked it out but I do remember um some kids saying like oh like my Filipinos my my helper is Filipino like aren't all helpers Filipino or um, don't Filipinos eat dogs? Like they had all these crazy stereotypes that were extremely offensive. Mm -hmm. And in my head for the longest time, you know, at one point, I know this sounds bad and I feel guilty feeling this way, but I was a child, I was like eight. And I remember thinking like, oh, like this is what they think about my people. Like, oh, I feel so embarrassed. Like, I, I don't, I don't want that to be the perception, but that is, that's what the kids in school were saying about us and about my country and my people. And at one point I felt like embarrassed, you know, and I just looking back, I'm like, that is so sad. Like I never, ever want to feel that way. No one should ever feel that way. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I think 
if anything, I, I, I became even more proud and I was like, yeah, this is, this is who I am. And I'm so happy to represent and, um, yeah, no one can say anymore <laughs> like this. Yeah. I'm so but sorry. It was, yeah. I, I can feel a little bit of what you're talking about of just people saying things about where maybe your family's from and just not knowing what to do with it and mm -hmm. feeling embarrassed that you're a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I mean, I remember my mom would always pack me like a thermos full of like my grandmother's cooking and like pe I don't have a Lunchable like the white kids would. At my right. It's like it's just a different experience and you feel kind of ashamed that you're different. Yeah. But yeah. later on, I feel like so many Asian people just kind of reclaim their own heritage in a way. Like I know I have. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Years of just like. Wanting to be unapologetically Asian and whatever, mm -hmm. that, I, I mean, I'm not fluent in Mandarin, unfortunately, but now I'm like, I mm -hmm. want to start learning and want to yeah. finally do that for myself. And I know there's so many people in Here Lies Love that are trying to learn Tagalog or, you know, mm -hmm. and trying to reconnect with that place and, and that version of themselves that is yeah. because sometimes we try to hide it, but um, it's good. Oh, yeah. It's it, it's also very hard when you're a child and the majority of the kids, like you said, have Lunchables and like string cheese and, you know, sprinkly yogurt, <laughs> like, and I'm there with my adobo and the kid next to me is going, ew, is that dog, right? So it's like, you, you know, it, it's very sad that that's how I felt from a very young age and I felt like it was something that I had to hide, but it's like, no. I'm 28. <laughs> like, I'm so proud. Over and done with. Like, yeah. No, it's, but you know, it took a while. So. No, oh, it takes it takes a while to get to that place. I mean. Yeah. It's it's just you have to really, it's it's acceptance really of it of um yeah. wanting to be truly yourself and wanting to be proud of who you are because I mean. Yeah. Your looks aren't going to change. <laughs> You're not going to get any less Asian. And exactly. Then you can finally just be yourself. And I think that's... that's Absolutely. Real. And there's something so beautiful when you fully embrace it. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah. I, you know, I'm like, yeah, I'll talk about it. I'll talk about how much I love Asian, all Asian food, really. And like, yeah. about my passions or talking For to sure. my parents and, and just really trying to learn as much as I can about where I'm from <laughs> yeah and I think honestly the biggest word a big part of it is that these people who have these assumptions and stereotypes about our people and our culture they're just not educated they're not familiar they're not exposed to it so they judge it mm -hmm. and I think it's important that we educate them and I think the more that we would try to hide those people will never learn so really we're doing them a favor of being like well try it like you, you think do you think my food is stinky like it's actually really good <laughs> you know like this is what it is this is how you make it this is like I feel like the more open you are and um open to talking about things it's uh it not only are you doing them a favor like you're also doing yourself a favor by being true to yourself and like, mm. sticking to your guns but obviously way easier said than done I did not do that as a child I just hid and would ask my uh I, I would ask um my nanny to pack me like sandwiches you know because I didn't want I didn't want to bring rice I didn't want the kids to be like oh is her food is stinky like you know I didn't I didn't want to be bullied mm -hmm. I was sick of it and I just wanted to fit in but the older you get it's like Oh, screw that. <laughs> Fitting yeah. in is so overrated. <laughs> Just be you. <laughs> Live your best life. <laughs> and then you'll find your tribe, the more true you are to yourself, too. <laughs> yeah. And I think what's beautiful is that you're saying about educating people is, you know, these shows that you've been a part of are educating people so much. And I don't yeah. think that I would be as proud to be Asian if I hadn't seen these shows or hadn't been exposed to them. Like, they truly changed oh. Actually, stop you're gonna make me cry <laughs> but it's that's like that is like why I do what I do like I because I was that little girl who was um like kind of scared to be herself and ashamed and um so 
that means a lot to me like especially when I see like little girls like little Asian girls and um just the looks on their faces after seeing a show and and being like yeah I can do that too or you know it's it's uh uh <laughs> that's means a lot to me yeah I feel like that's just that is the impact that you're really having on people especially me and so many others that you've come in contact with of just you're in so inspiring and um, just giving people a chance to see themselves and feel accepted and fully embrace who they are. I mean, I K-pop changed everything and then here lies love. I mean, I'm not Filipino, but it's like I connect to so much of the You're honorary. Yeah. <laughs> like all the people. Honorary. <laughs> say I mean, Renee's dad asked me if I was Filipino and I had to tell him no <laughs> no I'm from Taiwan and he said that's close enough I was like yeah okay <laughs> Renee's dad's so funny like whatever you say um <laughs> these shows are really doing so much for the community of just Asian people or specifically Filipino or specifically Korean or really anyone mm -hmm. that these shows and getting educated on on different things and you know, with Zach's character Brad talking about food and in the show and people say that's an overused trope but I'm like no we all experience that right yep feel like that and to feel like mm -hmm. you're not enough, like, oh that's right that was part of his monologue wasn't it yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh oh yeah that is I every Asian kid can identify with that for sure 100 percent no yeah, yeah. For here, like, just be educating so many people on a topic that we're not going to get taught in schools. I mean, I didn't know anything about that at all. And then I finally asked people that I knew, like, what was your connection to that history? And, and what was your own experience going through that? And so I think it's just doing so much for people. And I can only hope that there will be more productions to continue doing that. Cause I, I hope so, too. I'm like, please, another revival. <laughs> yes, this is how we break stereotypes. This is how we break bullying it's through yeah. education. It's it's educating people in in um creative ways, and I think that's exactly what theater does, and I, that's why I love it. And like you said, I hope there is more to come. I really do. I really do. Please, please, more. Mm -hmm. Um, and what is your advice for Filipino and Asian youth wanting to pursue performing? go for it <laughs> do it and and uh work very hard educate yourself um keep practicing keep training um and get whatever experience you can when it comes to actually performing and doing the thing because you can train as much as you want but there's nothing quite like being in front of an audience and experiencing that and getting familiar with that feeling um I think that's really important. And if you can't, if you if there's like no events, you can do it yourself. Like you put yourself out there. But there's so many ways, you know. Um, it's just uh, you gotta you kind of you have to be hungry for it, and it will happen. It will happen if you if you work hard and if you you've got the talent and the um the the love and joy for it. It it will happen. It takes a lot of hard work though, and um, there will be discouraging times, but. Don't stop. I'm still going. I need I need to give myself this pep talk often. <laughs> um, yes, you gotta love it for sure. But I think it's yeah. Does that answer? Did I? Yes, did I think I answer the question. <laughs> go for it. Just can put your whole heart into it, and you know, love it this much. It's like you'll do anything for it. So exactly, exactly. And if you don't, if it stops bringing you joy and it brings you more grief and stress and you're miserable then then don't but I feel like those who really have the passion for it and love it they do keep going and those are the ones who make it mm -hmm. but um and that's why you gotta have thick skin that's what they always say right yeah yeah, yeah. and to to wrap us up a little bit what does representation mean to you because you are like the representation to me at least <laughs> that's sweet representation I think it's everything that we just talked about I mean I I feel extremely honored very proud that I got to be in these two back-to-back -back Asian shows um one being my own um heritage I I think it's um representation is education really 
mm -hmm. for the world. Um, and um, I think that goes a really, really long way, more than people think. Um, like we talked about, there's so many stereotypes when it comes to Asians. And this representation is breaking those stereotypes, hopefully, and you know, re-educating so that there's we can get rid of all that crap. <laughs> um, yeah, that's what it means to me. Yeah, that's a perfect answer. Um, and yeah, is there anything else you want to share with people who are listening? <laughs> no, no, there's nothing else I want to share other than you are amazing, Ashley. Watch this amazing girl and support her journey as well, because I see your love and passion for this and I'm I'm so grateful like honestly for your support I've said that so many times but like you remind me a lot of myself too and that like I can see your love for it and you know even like your covers of like our Artemis stuff mm -hmm. like that's that's what I mean it's like you know you might not have an audience readily available for you but so then create it like, put out your content if you love it so much yeah. just get out there do what you love period you know yeah. the rest will follow oh thank you so much for saying that that's so sweet <laughs> oh my gosh this has been the one of the best conversations um yeah truly so happy we were able to make this happen yeah, me too. kind of get to get to know you a bit better and and really mm -hmm. discover who julia is um <laughs> more because you have done so many amazing things and so i'm like mm -hmm. it to keep going i'm sure um and so yeah for everyone listening who will be, who will be listening please make sure mm -hmm. to continue to follow and support julia on her journey i mean i think can people find you on in our on social media or yes instagram uh julia.abueva i'm not very active on other platforms at the moment other than that one tiktok video that i posted <laughs> too um but yeah instagram is mainly my uh social media platform that I use yeah well then thanks to everyone who will be listening and thank you so much Julia for this incredible thank you, Ashley. Thank thank you for you. joining us on Broadway Corner with Ashley Ha. Thank you so we, much. we will we will see you later see you next time <laughs> yeah. you've been listening to Broadway Corner with Ashley Ha. thank you so much for tuning in I'll see you next time <laughs>